Hello, everyone. Uh, it's our team, me, Vasily Kazanin, and I'm Katya Nikitska. Uh, we glad to present our industrial project, and we uh, <clears throat> want to say many thanks to our mentors, Guy Star from Bydata and uh, Roy Granit from Computine, our host company, uh, for their help and optimism. Our host company, Computine, is a clinical stage discovery development company. When it searches for discovery in new uh, drug targets for in field of cancer immunotherapy, what does it mean? So, uh, in few words, uh, everyone knows that after COVID-19, that T cells is an element of our adaptive immunity, and uh, also we already know that uh, T cells uh, they work in uh, tumor to detect and destroy tumor cells. But in case of cancer, this function can be blocked. For example, we know what this gene uh, accompanies such kind of dysfunction in T cells. And if we will find a way to block this uh, device uh, receptor, we can recover the ability of T cell to destroy tumor. And uh, other genes with a similar function can, uh, uh, can be conditional target for new drugs, and it will give us an additional chance for patients unresponsive for existent treatment. So, uh, what the idea? So, uh, the, the important part of the project is to identify uh, functions for unknown genes, for un uh, what are similar to the known ones. So, imagine what we have uh, for each gene, this representation, the point or vector in multidimensional space. Uh, colored point, it's uh, known markers, and we have a lot of unknown. And uh, for each gene, we have a uh, quantitative measure from RNA sequencing uh, to measure the level of expression for a gene in the cell. And uh, if this embedding space, uh, this multidimensional space, uh, capture well the functional specific of each gene, then we can expect that uh, if uh, functions of two genes are similar, then, we will be, uh, uh, then they will appear close to each other, and they can be named co-expressed. So co-expression is similar to co-occurrence, uh, but uh, with uh, continuous values instead of booleans. In our case, we have uh, uh, seven classes uh, what are related to specific states uh, of T cells and named accordingly, uh, and uh, thousands of unlabeled uh, 34 uh, labeled and thousands of unlabeled genes. And we have two groups of uh, uh, so named uh, checkpoints to check the accuracy of our prediction uh, and make some so kind of uh, sanity check. So, uh, data uh, what we have a lot of scary words uh, melanoma, lung cancer, carcinoma, uh, liver cancer. Uh, and uh, as uh, <coughs> I said before, we have a uh, result of RNA sequencing. So the first five data sets uh, we got from SmartSec. Uh, SmartSec it's important. Uh, and uh, one data set from DataX, it's a new uh, method of uh, sequencing. It's more accurate, but with a lot of more challenging. And uh, as I said before, the need to have uh, gene expression uh, for each cell. So the data set contains of uh, columns each cell, each gene is a row, uh, in cells we have expression level, and we have uh, marker, uh, markers. As I said before, we have only 34 markers in our data sets and thousand unlabeled. For example, this is uh, uh, how, lo how that set looks like. So they have uh, 11,000 genes, and only small amount of uh, known markers. Uh, this is, uh, for example, a lung cancer data set. And uh, as we can see, the classes are not good separated. So, and we can say this embedding space, there they can identify somehow the uh, functional similarity. So, the task is uh, create a 
emitting spells, uh, what will be able to capture functional specific of each gene. And using this uh, embedding, find uh, unknown genes uh, with similar co-expression. And as a result, we can be, <laughs> we can hope that each potential gene could become a drug target for cancer treatment. Um, and how our, our, uh, how the host company, how Compugene use this approach, so it's approach quite novel, so they use uh, PCI uh, specific way, so they apply it uh, for gene representation, the each cell is a feature and the gene is a sample, they apply specific thresholds uh, to have uh, data with uh, data set of 2,000 most variative genes, and uh, as a result, they have representation, uh, they can analyze presentation of genes in uh, several principal components. Uh, usually they use principal component two and component three. And they found that this embedding is uh, well enough, uh, uh, in this embedding, the well-known markers, well enough separated. And they used, it is, uh, used this embedding to reveal unknown functions for unlabeled genes as a result, they have two uh, drugs in the clinical trial study uh, stage. So you can check on the website. So uh, they proved the classical approach to build, uh, to create a good embedding using PCA. And they want to try machine learning to improve the embedding. So the main goal of the project was to train a self-supervised algorithm for genes classification and to find the closest genes, COSPREX1, with our provided markers. As an advanced goal, we had to expand this algorithm to the new 10x dataset, which is much more sparse. The idea was to take the same data to use uh, cells as features and to reduce its dimensionality with autoencoder. The main idea of autoencoder is to get embedding space, which is the low dimensional representation of the input data. And then when we have this embedding space, we uh, run classification task on it. But from the very beginning, we had a problem. How will we evaluate this final classification? Is it good or bad? It depends on two things. On the uh, embedding quality uh, uh, itself, in terms of how well this embedding represents the input data. And uh, on the classification quality, how well this embedding allow, allows to capture co-expressed genes. In the first case, autoencoder has metric, mean squared error, and we can evaluate the loss function uh, during uh, reducing dimension size. But in case of classification, we have no such metric. Uh, at the beginning, Capugin team suggested to, that they will um, uh, evaluate all the results manually but it wouldn't be the very effective uh, way to work, right? Uh, we had to have such, uh, some number that will tell us about the quality of this classification. And thanks to our mentor guy, we found this way. Uh, we called it KNN leave one, leave one out, and I will explain uh, it uh, a bit later. So we started from reproducing current approach, then we built our first initial model, then we optimized it, and then we searched for the co-expressed genes. We use the same data preprocessing uh, as Compugene does. We use thresholds to get about 2,000 genes. We uh, filter out genes that have mean expression less than 0 0.6, and according to this uh, ratio of standard deviation and mean. After that, we got uh, smaller d data sets, and we run PCA and compared PCT PC2 versus PC3, and uh, got some maps. Compugene confirmed that uh, they look uh, reasonable. All the markers are grouped uh, correctly. And then we moved to our main goal. So the first model was simple autoencoder model with one hidden layer. Uh, again, the, the, again, the main goal was to get this embedding, which is the low dimensional representation of the input data. We tried several embedding sizes from 10 to 800, depending on the data set. This is how the train looks. The blue line is the train loss, the orange line is validation loss, and you see the model converges. And this is the result of the data set with 50 dimensions. It was again plotted uh, using your map. You see that uh, genes uh, markers are well organized, but it's difficult to say if 
uh, this embedding is good on, or not. Will the classification will be correct or not? And this is where our key and only one out comes into play. We take embedding, we choose only genes that have label not none, these are our markers. We run k-nearest k neighbors classification task on it, expecting that uh, it would uh, classify these genes into seven classes. And then we cross-validate uh, this uh, result using sklearn one out method. Each time we, takes, uh, we take uh, one sample out, and the model try is trying to predict it. Then after we uh, completed all the 34 experiments, we have, as a result, accuracy how many times the model was correct. And then when we apply this algorithm that takes as an input embedding one or several and gives us a, as a result accuracy of each embedding, we could run plenty of different experiments trying to change dimension sizes or even model independently from compute gene. So our first uh, try was uh, with these three data sets. We tried three different dimensions. And we also compared uh, accuracy that we got with PCA. Uh, the first data set got the highest accuracy for 50, for 50 dimensions, and it outscored PCA model. CRC2 data set got the highest accuracy for 100 dimensions, and it also outperformed PCA. And HEPA scores at parity with PCA. It was our initial run. We uh, continued experimenting with different dimension sizes, but here we could uh, c confirm that uh, neural network works better than PCA. So we moved to our next step. We searched for different uh, hyperparameters, like basic ones, like learning rate and so on. And also we tried different sizes of dimension itself, uh, uh, sorry, of embedding space itself, and uh, of uh, hidden layers as well. We also tried to work with data sets changing, new thresh uh, changing uh, those thresholds. We also upgraded the model, and by this time we, we were done with our main data sets, but we still didn't uh, get uh, high accuracy for new data set, 10x data set. For this, we used two different approaches. First of all, CME's adversarial network that uh, was trying to reduce dimension and to classify markers at the same time. And we implemented two papers uh, that uh, used NLP methods to work with, with genes, uh, particularly uh, word to work and topic modeling. But still, we got uh, maximum accuracy that we got was 50%. Uh, since we didn't have time to elaborate on these two methods, we considered them as uh, beneficial and uh, like for future, for future work, suggested it uh, for future work. I'll explain a bit about these two upgrades of our work. So, uh, basic approach uh, limits uh, number of genes to 2,000. We use these thresholds to filter out genes that do not satisfy to this criteria. But when we applied this th these thresholds, we noticed that almost all markers were filtered out and we then had to manually add them to our final sample. And it's weird because all the classification is based on these markers. So uh, we decided to find new thresholds so that not to filter out these markers as a result. As a result, we got much larger data sets. You see that number of genes almost five times larger than 2,000. But still the accuracy was high, except this data set. We also compared these results to initial model and got almost the same accuracy, again, except this one data set. But this data set has almost twice larger number of cells comparing to other data sets. And we also had melanoma that has 6,000 cells. And we decided to use different model for these two data sets. We upgraded our model. Instead of one hidden layer, we used two hidden layers, and it helped us to dramatically improve our results. For example, for melanoma, we got, instead of 50%, we got 74. And we also improved this CRC2 data set to 88%. So, by this time, we, we got embeddings with high accuracy, and we, can, uh, we uh, had to, to search genes that co-expressed with our marks. We were asked to search uh, these genes uh, only in cycling and TRM classes. We chose the best embeddings in terms of our KNN Li one out score. And we had two conditions. We classified gene to some particular class only in case of both closest points are of this class. 
And we must have to, uh, on, on the intersections of at least four data sets. Uh, it means that if some gene is classified differently in different uh, data sets, we exclude it from the analysis. So we analyze only genes that are classified the same way in all data sets. These are uh, an example of these intersections. You see how many genes in each class are classified the same. And we were focused only on cycling and TRM classes. We also did sanity check for these intersections. We found three genes uh, from our checkpoint class in these intersections, and we had to check uh, to which class they were classified. And it was absolutely correct. They were classified correctly, and uh, it's also confirmed that uh, our classification was correct. As a result, we found three genes that can be considered as cycling markers in cycling class, and we found two genes in TRM class. This one gene is uh, masked because of confidentiality. And this is the uh, confirmation, the evidence from the literature. We have four markers that were found by Capugin in the literature that they are really uh, from these classes. And this one is a new one, completely new. We didn't, and Capugin didn't find uh, some, pro uh, pro uh, some improvements for in the literature. But they check its expression in several uh, data sets, and it confirmed that uh, it's, it's rather from the TRM class. Uh, to sum up, we found five new genes from two classes. We provided ComputeGene with a tool to find embeddings and to relate them, and we suggested new thresholds to increase the, prob the probability of finding new genes. That's it. Questions? No questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.